What's up guys, welcome back to Core CSS Mastery. We're going to be answering this question, should I learn vanilla CSS? Now, just in case you don't know, vanilla is not a specific type of CSS. Vanilla is just the term to describe the base level zero frills version of something. So that's contrasted with something like a framework for CSS. And examples of frameworks include Tailwind and Bootstrap, to name a couple of the most popular. So given that we have these frameworks available and many developers are making use of these frameworks, is it still worthwhile to learn the vanilla version of CSS? Why don't we just jump straight into using a CSS framework like Bootstrap or Tailwind? Now I can speak from experience here because I did this when I was first starting my web development journey. I decided I wanted to focus on more of the interesting languages. I wanted to focus on PHP, JavaScript, wasn't really too interested in CSS. I wanted to see if I could bypass that somehow. And I figured if I just jump straight into using Bootstrap, I won't have to deal with any of the nitty gritty of how to use vanilla CSS. I understand looking back that that was a mistake. And that's because a framework does not replace vanilla CSS. It's just another slightly more convenient way of writing CSS, but we still need to understand the core underlying technology. We're still essentially writing CSS, we're just doing it in a more convenient way when we make use of a framework. So to make effective use of a framework, we first need to understand how vanilla CSS works. The other advantage of this is if we understand CSS, we can work with any CSS framework. But if we start as our entry point by making use of a CSS framework, even if we manage to use it reasonably well, we're only going to be able to style with that framework. We're not going to be able to use vanilla CSS. We're not going to be able to jump over to another framework, at least not easily. Now, just to be clear here, there's nothing wrong with frameworks. Many developers make use of a CSS framework. I was using Bootstrap as my main CSS framework for quite a period of time and I migrated over to using Tailwind. They're both excellent CSS frameworks. They have slightly different approaches to the way they go about things, but at some point it's very likely you will be making use of a CSS framework. However, if you try and skip the vanilla CSS part of things and jump straight into using a framework, you're likely going to run into a few headaches and roadblocks. So as an example of this, let's just look at a small section from the Bootstrap documentation and a small section from the Tailwind documentation. And I'll give you an example of some of the types of issues I ran into as someone attempting to use a framework without fully understanding the core underlying technology, i.e. how to write vanilla CSS. So let's start with Bootstrap. And I'd just like to give you a very quick overview regarding how frameworks are used just in case you've not used one before. Do you remember how we were able to create CSS rules that targeted specific classes? We could then add that class to a certain element and all of the styling associated with that class would be applied to the element. A CSS framework is basically a list of different pre-made classes that we can apply to our elements. So rather than writing by hand a whole bunch of vanilla CSS rules for a specific element, we could make use of one of the frameworks classes and have the frameworks styles automatically applied to our element. Now this section of the documentation is talking about the class container. And what that does is it sets a max width. Well, what's that? It's obviously a CSS property. So we can see straight away that the documentation is using vanilla CSS to explain how the framework works. This documentation is pretty much assuming that we're already an expert in CSS. So as you can imagine, I had a fairly hard time reading the documentation because it references all of these vanilla CSS concepts that I wasn't aware of at the time. Now, something like a max width property, that's fairly self-explanatory. Even if we didn't know CSS, we could probably begin to guess at what something like max width does. But then the documentation starts talking about something known as a breakpoint. And if you don't know what a breakpoint is, it's fairly difficult to understand the rest of the documentation. 
And we also start asking ourselves questions such as, well, is this a CSS thing or is it something that's specific to Bootstrap? What is a breakpoint? If you wanted to know the answer to this question and you researched it, you would eventually find yourself at some point looking at vanilla CSS and we'll probably find ourselves reading a tutorial on media queries in CSS and how that relates to this concept of breakpoints. So in order to understand the documentation for the framework, we actually have to go away and research vanilla CSS anyway. It's better to just save ourselves the headache and do things in the right way, learn about vanilla CSS. Then we'll be able to use any framework. All of this documentation you see on the screen right now will just make sense because we know exactly what a breakpoint is. We know how they work. We know that a breakpoint is basically a CSS concept based around CSS media queries. That's something we'll look at a little bit later in the course. Let's take a quick look at a short excerpt from the Tailwind documentation. So this is position and CSS position is something that we really have to read about first. It's not clear what these various properties accomplish without reading about it. It's not like max width where we could probably guess this probably styles the max width of an element. CSS position is not straightforward. We actually have to look at examples taken from vanilla CSS to understand how this works. Utilities for controlling how an element is positioned in the DOM. We might not even know what DOM stands for, which can be problematic when we're first starting out. And we're given some classes we can apply to elements such as static, fixed, absolute. How does the documentation explain what these classes do? Well, you guessed it, it's by saying, this is the equivalent vanilla CSS. So if you use this class, this is going to be the end result. It's as if you'd written this specific vanilla CSS rule. So hopefully you can see from this, although frameworks are very useful, I highly recommend that you make use of a CSS framework at some point. Learning vanilla CSS is much more important than learning a framework. There's nothing that we can do with a framework that we can't achieve with vanilla CSS. In other words, if you just learned vanilla CSS and you never learned any CSS framework, you would still be able to do absolutely everything that someone with a CSS framework can do. And with that strong understanding of how CSS works at its core, you'll find it very straightforward to pick up any CSS framework whatsoever and understand quickly how it works and what it's doing based on the documentation. So should we learn vanilla CSS? Absolutely. It's one of the core web technologies that's used to design web pages. And if we try and jump in at the framework level, we're always going to be struggling and running into CSS problems we're not sure how to solve. All right, with that said, thanks very much for watching guys. Catch you in the next part of the course.